Good day, AIMCA. We're here with Anne Weatherall, uh, our reader in the Department of Psychology at the Victoria University of Wellington in New Zealand. Um, and she's, she's just going to answer a few questions about um, ethnomethodology, conversation analysis, and related disciplines. So, um, Anne, what are the basic ideas of conversation analysis? Well, I'm in psychology, as you mentioned, and for psychology, one of the basic ideas from conversation analysis is that really interaction is a basic form of social human behaviour. So it's the study of one of the most basic forms of social behaviour, interaction. Uh, so for me, uh, the study of social interaction, talk and interaction, conversation, is basically psychological. Okay. So, so how is that, that study done? Well, you make recordings of um, everyday interaction, whether it be institutional talk or everyday mundane talk. Uh, and one of the uh, fantastic things about it, from my perspective, is you're collecting um, examples of human behaviour in the world that would happen without the researcher's interference. Uh, so you're really getting to the heart of studying people. Mm. So, so what, what, what does CA do with those recordings once they've got? Well, you transcribe them uh, in a lot of detail because the analytic mentality is that any level of detail, any micropause, any intonation pattern uh, could be a thing that people orient to as relevant. And micropauses are a classic example of that. So if you greet somebody, uh, if a greeting doesn't come back straight away, uh, then you know, you'll know imagine that it's a snub or you'll interpret um, a micropause as a snub. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, what are some of the benefits of conversation analysis? Um, for psychology, it's really um, leading to a fundamental shift in the way people understand psychology. So in psychology the dominant paradigm has been a cognitive one where human behaviour gets studied, the way people think, their attitudes, their emotions, um, the way people attribute blame, responsibility, all those things have been studied either by filling out questionnaires, pen and paper, message, um, pen and paper measures, or uh, pressing buttons on a computer, reaction times. Uh, and from those studies, inferences are made about what's going on inside people's heads. Mm. But that's, an, that's inferential stuff. An amazing thing about CA is it's anti-cognitive in so far as it brackets off what is going on inside people's heads and looks at how, say, emotions, thinking, are displayed so that other people can see that you're thinking. So if I'm going, ah. Uh, Mm. I may or may not be thinking, that's not really the question, but it's that I'm displaying my thinking to you. Mm. And so conversation analysis, although it's home discipline, is sociology. Psychology is really, um, and discursive psychology in particular, is really embracing CA as a way of studying human sociality, human behaviour. Okay. And so, so what are some of the um, topics in um, conversation analysis and, and psychology that you've used in conversation analysis for? Okay, um, what well, emotion is, one of them. How is it that um, people display and respond to emotion? Uh, I'm studying calls to an independent dispute resolution service for complaints about gas. So people ring up very irate and upset about having um, the electricity com companies threatening to disconnect their electricity, how is it that they display that upset through breathiness and so on? But the Independent Dispute Resolution Service wants to be neutral, so um, they tend to not respond with um, empathetic responses, but for example go, okay, have you, and offer a practical solution to um, to, to the complaint. Mm. So there's there's interesting ways, for example, the way emotion is displayed and handled in an institutional setting. And then the organisation finds that very useful because they're not sure what it is to do neutrality in an interaction. So for example, the manager said to me, should uh, they train the conciliators not to say okay, mm. because perhaps okay shows that you're 
agreeing with somebody um, and aligning with, with them, therefore not being neutral. But I was able to say to them, no, when you look at how OK is used in conversation, it's to move on to a next thing. To say, OK, we'll move on to um, finding out whether you've paid your bill or not. OK, moving to a next activity. Uh, and uh, so I was able to feed that back to the organisation. Don't tell your, don't train your conciliators not to say okay mm. because that would change the nature. So we don't, we don't really know a lot about how how interaction actually works because it's not always self-evident from what words mean. Mm. And so that's where conversation analysis comes in. Yeah, yeah, because it shows us how it is language does things. It's the study of action. How does the human beings do things and talk through the use of language, the practices? Okay. Well, thank you very much, Anne, and um, uh, thank you for today. Great.